everybody. Uh, <coughs> it's going to be the lecture number three, and I will talk about infinitesimal. Infinitesimal CR automorphism. I will define precisely what it means and always with properties. There will be, I think, no exercise in this. You will, now you'll know why I'm, I am taking time to define precisely that, but it's going to be, it's going to appear in the final lecture. That is a very important tool when you want to discuss bi local biholomorphism between real hypersurface. Okay? So what is the definition? So we saw, just to remind you, you know now what a smooth vector field is. Smooth vector field on M, you know what it means. That means summation, AJ, smooth coefficient, Z, Z bar. Remember in the parametrization, it's real W, Z, Z bar real W, D, D, Z, J bar. This is a CR, CR, smooth vector field. That means that if you apply to the defining function, it becomes zero, right? Okay. That means that. So pr the precise definition. A smooth, a smooth, real, vector field x no no cr nothing just a small smooth real vector field x defined in an open set u uh, of m is called infinitesimal CR automorphism. So it's not CR. You just take a real uh, vector field, smooth real vector field. It's called CR automorphism of M if, if for every P in M, there exists epsilon bigger than zero and an open set U prime in U of P such that if I take the flow the diffeomorphism that goes from u prime to exp exponential tx q for it's in u. These guys are CR mapping. If this guy are CR mapping. What does it mean? Remember, a CR function, it's a function which is annihilated by the CR vector field. Okay? It's analogous of a holomorphic function when you are in, uh, in uh, okay? So you want the flow. Maybe I should remind what you, everybody knows what, uh, maybe you don't know this, uh, this notation. What does it mean? T exp t x p what is that is the integral curve it's it's gamma t if i say gamma t which satisfies d gamma dt of t is given by the vector field x at gamma of t with p being gamma uh, gamma of p is equal to zero gamma zero is equal to p right this is a flow. 
So this is this x t, uh, p t x that p is given by it has to satisfy this equation differential equation with initial data gamma of zero is equal to p. So you let varying q and you it's going to be a point in M because X is a vector field in M. So you see these diffeomorphism, and they are for sure defined for small t less or equal to epsilon. Okay? So you consider this flow and you want this flow to be CR map. That means annihilated by the CR vector field. That's the precise definition of an infinitesimal CR automorphism. So this goes from M to M. There are different morphisms. And you want, they are, in general, they are smooth, but you want more. You want this guy to be CR. So how can you characterize them? It's a little hard to, you have a definition. How can, when can you say that they are really uh, CR automorphism. So there is a first theorem which says the following. Let X, let X be a real vector field. Define in an open set U of M. Then you have this, this characterization. Then X is a CR, inf uh, yeah. is an infinitesimal, <coughs> infinitesimal CR automorphism. at P of M, if the following is true, if and only if the commutator for every smooth CR vector field, that means the DZ bar, CR vector field on M, or in U, uh, on U in M, the commutator XL, if you commute X with L, this is again CR, a CR vector field. That's a, that's a, <coughs> that's a characterization. So X is an infinitesimal CR automorphism if and only if you have that. Every time you have a CR uh, uh, Oh, it's something in missing. <laughs> so every smooth CR vector field L on U, XL is CR. Okay? If you come, if you take the, the Lie bracket for every L, it has to be CR again in order to have to be a, a, an infinitesimal CR automorphism. Okay? So I am not going to do the proof of that. You can, you can find the proof in the, in the book by Marwendi and Rothschild, for instance. But it's a very useful tool. Why? Because you want to see that it's a Lie algebra. How can you show that it's a Lie algebra then? So. What? Excuse me. Any, for any CR, the coffee is CR. Yeah. For any, for any smooth CR vector field L, this is again CR, right? This is a characterization of a CR in uh, automorphism. So a corollary of that is that this is a Lie algebra. Consequence. So 
this, the, the set of all these x is called first before definition, another definition. We call that out m at p. It's a set of infinitesimal CR automorphism. at p. And the claim is that out mp is a Lie algebra. Why is it so? We, we just have it enough to see that the, if you take two guys, the, the Lie bracket is still there, OK? So how do you do that? Take x and y in out mp. By the characterization theorem, if you take LCR, then you have x, l, and <coughs> y, l are again CR. OK? And now what do you want to see? You want to see that x, y, l should be CR for any l, because it's again the characterization. So you use Jacobi identity, right? You write like just minus l x, y, and then you use that it's equal to, I never know, the way it goes, but I think it's like that. Plus, uh, plus what? X, Y, L, is it ah, true? Okay. Is it true? Okay. Something like that. It's a copy identity. So you have this guy, this guy by the theorem, since it's CR, it's CR, it's CR, and then that means that this is CR. So you see that it's a Lie algebra. OK? So this is a Lie algebra. And now, a little more. Speaking, you say, yes. Say uh, the orthorphism is near P rather than. Near P, it's a germ. It's germ. It's germ, yeah. It. Thank you very much. You, it's, it's in an open set of P, right? Everything is local. Yeah. Exactly. Infinitesimal C of P. Because you have this diffeomorphism, you, you can do only local when you solve. OK? So it's very much, it's, it's a gem. OK. Now, a, a better, a better um, characterization of, of that. By the way, I will put. Uh, I will put the note of my lecture at the end of the, on Friday, on the website. You will have all the, and some exercise done also. Okay. Now, a corollary of that. How can you describe this, this, uh, how can you recognize when x is in out mp. So the corollary is the following. Let m always be a smooth real hypersurface and let x be a smooth real vector field. On M, defined in an open, in an open, in an open, on yeah, open subset U in M. Then X is in out M P. 
if and only f if you can write x as summation g is equal to 1 until n and b in the dimension of what? You can write, you, you know, you can always using, uh, using the complexification, the, the way we, we did complexification, you can always write like that, a real vector field. I told you, you, you take the bar here. So co the coefficient has to be conjugate. What is your guess? You know, every, every x can be written like that, OK. But what about aj? What do you think? What would be the criterion? To recognize that it's really in out mp. What is your guess? Yeah? AJ is smooth, but it's much more than that. What do you think? Remember, the, the flow has to be CR automorphism. No, no. AJ R AJR CR function. That's all. And this is easy to, to check. It's much easier than uh, that. So AJ are CR function, that means annihilated by the CR bundle nu, OK? It's the way you recognize. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove that using the theorem. How do you do that? So prove. You can take the bracket of x when we d d down d g d z g. I will. I will exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we have to do that. So you agree that every if I use z j, you know, how do you call notation. Every real vector field is written like that. So there is no doubt. I can always write my vector field like that. Aj ddzj plus Aj bar ddzj bar. Now, as you said, we have to use the characterization. Aj are smooth function. So I take L, a CR vector field, which is written in the form there is only zj bar, okay? okay? So it's some okay? Bj are smooth function. Everything is smooth. And now I crochet. I come on, you bracket. I bracket. So I have to to do x l, okay? So it's going to be what? Since you are maybe not too familiar, I will do the detail. So it's, uh, it's some aj d d z j plus summation aj bar. This is my x. And I have only summation bj d d z j bar. OK? And when I bracket, what is what is uh, what is uh, surviving? This is x. This is l. So I have to apply x to b j. Okay. So I will have summation x of b j d d z j bar. Okay. And then what do I, what do I have? That's that's this uh, the, this one. No, when I go this way, I will have minus. This is L of a j bar. 
the DCJ bar, okay? But there, are, uh, in the, the, there is still a one term. You see, I have a lot of DCJ bar, but I will have which contradiction in ZJ? There is something missing. What is the, what is the part missing? This guy should also apply to that. So it's going to be minus L of AJ DDZ. You agree? And nothing else left because of all the stuff. And so what do you realize? I can write like summation X of BJ minus L AJ bar, tac tac, DDZJ bar minus L of AJ. And now, you want that, you know that if X is an automorphism, every time you, crush, you bracket with a CR, you have to stay in the CR category. But here, look, here it starts very well, but you have some term here. And what about this term? If you want to be CR, they have to be out. That means that all this guy has to be zero. Yeah. And this is exactly the definition of a CR, of a CR function, right? That's that. So to be in, it's, it's equivalent to say that L of AJ is equal to zero, which means AJ is a CR function. Okay? This is a nice characterization because you now you can check easily. You don't have to bracket every L with X. But by the way, the theorem of uh, I didn't prove, this is the hard part. You have to, to use formula in, uh, it's, not, it's not easy, it's a, it's a long proof. If we have had more time, I will have to do, but you can find in this book, it's very well uh, done. Okay, now, we are not interested in out MP. We are interested in a much in a subset. I will describe now. Now, from the time from now on, I will talk. It was smooth. M was smooth up to now, but now I'm going to take M to be real analytic, because in the real analytic case, very nice things happen which do not happen in general in, smooth, in the smooth category. So, Eight, nine, yeah. Okay, now M will be real analytic. What does it mean, real analytic? The row, the defining function is analytic, therefore using the implicit function theorem, you get exactly that the phi is real analytic. So M will be given by the same formula, M W is phi of Z, Z bar, real W, but now this guy is real valued, real analytic. Okay, definition. Holm, holo, it's, it stands for holomorphic. Holm MP out, which is a subset of out MP, is a set of germs of real analytic infinitesimal 
CA automatism. What does it mean when I say in automorphism? What does it mean to be real analytic infinitesimal CA automatisms? That means first that the coefficients are CR function, and they are not only smooth, but real analytic. So it's of the form x is of the form summation aj ddzj plus summation aj bar ddzj bar, where aj is a function of all that. Laj is equal to 0, and aj is real is real analytic, near zero, OK? And here, I have to give you a uh, 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 yeah. real analytic, L. L. It's a CR vector field. Huh? The, the, okay. just, it means that it's a CR, OK? And here, the result by Tomasini that I don't want to, I was expecting also to, to be able to, to, to prove it, but I don't think we will have time. It's a very important step. Do you know what, is the, proper, what pro the property is? Of you have a CR function. Your M is real analytic. It's exactly the, the point. It's because M is real analytic that you can do it. You give yourself a CR function on a real analytic map, which is CR, what can you expect as a property? What do you think? So you take a function f. You have Lf is equal to 0 on m, which is real analytic. What does it mean, f, which is a, a function on m? Remember the parametrization, Peter? Is Peter. Yeah. It's a z s plus i phi z z bar s. Phi is real analytic. What does it mean? That you can expect to do this kind of stuff. You see? You can complexify. That's the point. And to be f to be a function which is a CR function, it means that you have a function on m dot. So it's a function like that. And you can. And the coordinates it's going to be like that. So take a function which is like that on M, which is CR. What do you think? What can you expect uh, on F? Have a guess also. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. That F, in fact, extends in a neighborhood. But for that, you really need that phi. The uh, first step is that phi can be complexified. Otherwise, there is no way to see. And it's a very it's a very neat proof using distribution theory. Very, I, I encourage you to to look at the proof. I think it's Tomasini, the first, it's, it's it's very well, uh, and it's a very crucial uh, argument that was very useful when you do reflection Schwartz reflection principle uh, principle um, in uh, in uh, in CN instead of C. It's always there. So that's why I am, I think it's a, I can give you the, the exact place where it is done. I think it's page 28. <laughs> to be sure that it's, it's so, it's so, it's a beautiful in, um, argument. I just want to check that it's true. I have always my, my, uh, my Bible, yeah. <laughs> Should not say that, but yeah, it's proposition one seven five. 
and I don't think you can find uh, in another place. It's very, uh, instead of paper, I mean it's 175. And it's a very neat argument about, you know, uh, uh, ellipti uh, ellipticity of the, of the D-bar. Okay, so let's come back to the, so you have exactly the, the, if M is real analytic, then every CR function which is real analytic, the F actually extends as a holomorphic function. So now, I told you about this guy. That means that you can be much more precise about the coefficient. So I will give you the proof, the, le the next proof, which is, uh, I don't know where. Shouldn't have an, an order. Yeah. Okay. So let's finish the corollary. Proposition. It's going to be the last one of the proposition. X, I take X in whole MP. That means with real analytic coefficient. Then this guy is here if and only if there exists Z, a holomorphic vector field. What does it mean, a ve holomorphic vector field? That means a vector field with holomorphic coefficient. That it's not only defined on M, but it extends its holomorphic function. OK? So a holomorphic vector field is of the form, it's a germ, it's summation, uh, AG of Z, there is no Z bar, DZZJ, where this guy is holomorphic near, uh, near the point P, okay? It's a holomorphic function. Yeah, there's not Z, Z, Z bar. No, holomorphic vector field. So it's really in... Okay? So it's annihilated by... Okay? It's a holomorphic vector field such that what? Such that the real part of Z is tangent to M and my, in it, my X is given by real Z restricted to M. You see? That means that X is a real part of a holomorphic function restricted to M. So how do you see that? How do you see that? You just use what I said. So by the um, characterization proper corollary, you know that your X is given by summation aj, z, z bar s, d, d, z, j, plus summation aj bar, z, z bar s, d, d, z, j bar. That means the real part of this guy, two, two, two times the real part, okay? And now you know that this guy, this guy are CR function, real analytic. So they write like, as I say, holomorphic function at the point Z, S plus I phi of Z, Z bar S. Okay? So that means that X can be written, see, there is a two missing, but there is no problem, as a real part, two real part of a holomorphic function. Of this is Z, 
restricted to M. Okay? Because you have this guy plus the bar. And, and AJ is, is, is a holomorphic function at the point Z, S plus I phi Z, Z bar. Okay? So what is the candidate for Z? So Z, you take Z is equal to summation AG of Z it is EJ. Okay? And by this characterization, this is, uh, this, is, uh, this is done. So you have a nice characterization of Holm MP. It's just a real part of a holomorphic function. Okay? There is a tool, it's not a, it's two real part. I mean, you have to, to do. Uh, okay. 2x, okay. Uh, how do you, no, 1 over t. X is, the X is this guy plus the bar of this guy. Okay? Z, you take z is ah, equal okay. to this one. So x is this guy plus z bar. So it's, Modulo the constant, it's exactly what I said. Okay? This is, this is Z restricted to M plus Z bar restricted to M. Because you plug in the, this, this guy is this guy. AG is holomorphic and you tick at a point in M. So it means it's Z restricted to M. And this is Z bar restricted to M. Okay? So if I give you, oh, I have time, that's perfect. Is, this is, is the, is, is the, is it, oh, is it um, sub, uh, a Lee sub algebra, uh, yeah? You see, when I write this guy, call it Z restricted to M, okay? What is this guy? It's a, it's a conjugate of this guy. If you conjugate that, you get this guy. The real part is Z plus, it, uh, of a number, it's Z plus Z bar over two, there is this two, okay? So the question, next question is, is it a, sub, a, a Lie subalgebra? What do you think? We know that out M is a, is a, Lie, al, is a Lie algebra. My question is, is Hall also, a, is it a, a subalgebra? What do you think? What do I have to check? Question? Holm M P Li subalgebra. What do you think? It will be good. I think yes. Yes. How do you prove it? Yeah. How? So X X is the real part of Z. Forget about the two if you don't you, you don't mind. So it's Z plus Z bar, right? Z is holomorphic. Why? You take another one. It's W plus W bar, holomorphic. That means here there is only DDZ, here you have only DDZ bar. And now what do you do? To be a, an early, you have to, to look that the bracket is in, uh, in your, uh, so what happened in, how can you write it? So you write as Z plus Z bar, W plus W bar. Not that, uh, there is some notation, be careful you have to, to be in on M, but it's a sketch. Huh? And so what is the result of that? It's linear in, uh, so how do you write it? 
It's ZW plus what? Yeah? Plus what? Etc. Plus Z bar W plus. And there are some guys not surviving. Why? Remember, the coefficients are holomorphic. That means that if, if you write this guy as homomorphic, this is holomorphic. And here you have. Uh, Kj bar of z, they are anti holomorphic. Ddzj yes. bar. So, what happens if you bracket it? You have h and dzj applied to this guy. You think it survived? No. So, this guy doesn't exist anymore. And this guy doesn't exist anymore. And you are left. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Thank you, yeah, thank you. <laughs> which, which, is, which is exactly the same as that. That means that the result in this guy is a real part of this guy. OK? And obviously, uh, if you crochet, if you bracket two holomorphic guy, it's still holomorphic. OK? okay? So this is a list of algebra. Now, I, I think I have some minutes left, so I can just give you an example. Oh, this is great. If I give you if I give you in, I, if, I, if I work with whole MP, remember, to get a good characterization, I have to have only real analytic hypersurface. So I give you, for instance, with a polynomial, in W is, say, ZZ bar, just ZZ bar in C2, the most, the levy hypersurface. Do you see right the way a candidate to be in Holm MP? Can you tell me right the way? There is an x, an obvious x in Holm for this guy. This is m at 0. We are so what will be a good candidate? There is always two candidates. Oui? Uh, yes? I need a holomorphic vector field whose real part is tangent to that. Do you see that? I can write differently. Maybe you will see much more if I write like that. Divided by? Divided by? It has, uh, I'm not sure I understood. I'm a little, you know, I have. The DZ bar, it's not holomorphic. I need a holomorphic one. D over D W. If I take D, let's check. I say that this guy is in whole M0. Why? What do I have to check? That the real part is tangent. What is the real part? What is this guy? What does it mean? It means 1 over 2. Uh, yeah. OK? Here, this is what? Oh, what do I? The real part, yeah. <laughs> I was. So what is the real part of this guy? One over two and this. Uh, and this is correct. Yeah. Because you have T, you have ZZ bar, and DDS is tangent. That means that DDS 
is a CR infinitesimal CR automorphism. OK? There is at least one. But there is another one called the grading, the grading element. What is the grading? The Euler field. Somebody knew? I, I, um, I claim that, yeah. Z times uh, D One I claim that this guy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish with this exercise we will do together, is in Holm M0. How do you do it? There is something missing. Half of this and, uh, not half of this. One half z d d z plus w. I, I, I mean, uh, you have to restrict to m. So how do you do it for this guy? You have to take the real part of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like doing. Since uh, this is real, what do you do? You, you, say you took this guy plus W, D, D, W, w applied to him W minus Z, Z bar, OK? Plus 1 over 2 Z, D, D, Z plus W, D, D, W in W minus ZZ bar is it equal to zero? You have to check it. So what is what is that? Just let's compute to be sure that everybody in W is V minus V bar over two I. So what is the result of that? Zero. So you get only here, so you get minus one over two and then what? If you di differentiate z z bar, this is good for this part. And now here, w on m, what is w on m? w, you have to restrict on m. On m, it's the real part. I imagine part is that. So on m, it's s plus so I, z bar. s plus i. ZZ bar, right? And now DDW, what is DDW? In W is ZZ bar, that means that W is given by S plus I ZZ bar, right? And then DDW of this guy, what is that? You have to differentiate this guy with respect to W. Nothing here, what do you have on you? What is the differentiation of DDW? Uh, one, one over two i. Yeah. OK, I hope I'd. <laughs> That's good. Now you have to take the bar of the result. And we will expect that it's 0. So the bar is what? So it's going to be, this is real, so it doesn't change. Minus 1 over 2 zz bar plus what? S, S minus. I Z Z bar times <coughs> minus one over two I. Is it true? Is it true? <laughs> Is it true? Here you have minus Z Z bar. And here you have ZZ bar over 2i. Yeah, plus that's correct. And there is no S. OK? So it's true. So that means that Holm M0 for this guy, there is always two elements, one of uh, DDW and the Euler field. OK? So you see how to compute it. 
So this will be the key to compute what is exactly in this set whole MP. We will uh, compute completely and see that it gives all the information about biolomorph. It, it gives bi uh, very good information about the biolomorphism between two real hypersurface. In fact, we will say you have MW is, for instance, start with a Levy non degenerate because anything higher order, any real hypersurface near zero, which is Levy non degenerate, which means that this term exists. We will see, thanks to, the co to computing the, um, the Holm, the, this Holm M0 of this model part, just forgetting about the higher order term, we will see that in fact all the B holomorphism map between this real hypersurface with anything here, they are uniquely determined, determined only by the two first derivatives. You know maybe this theorem is chern moser theorem. When you know the two first derivatives, you know everything. And this is done. chern -Chan moser method was to use exactly computing Holm of this part. We know, today we know only that there is two guys. But tomorrow we will see that there is much more, and this is exactly the indication that two jets are enough to completely determine the bialomorphy. It means that they are very rigid. Okay? So I think I'm going to stop here.